Hello, I'm Roz. I'm going to help you learn more about Egyptian hieroglyphics by looking at the hieroglyphic objects we have around the museum. Come with me and we'll go and find more objects with hieroglyphs on in the gallery. So here we are in the Ancient Lives Gallery. Let's see what hieroglyphics we can find. So, what are hieroglyphics? To us, they look a bit like a secret code, but the symbols and pictures were the written language used to record many things in ancient Egypt from nearly 5,000 years ago. There were about 1,000 different characters used. Some represented words, some represented sounds, and some helped clarify meaning. It wasn't until a Frenchman called Jean-Francois Champollion deciphered the Rosetta Stone. The same information was written on the stone in three different languages, so by comparing them, he could understand them all. This unlocked the mystery that hieroglyphs were read from top to bottom or from right to left. Hieroglyphics have been found written onto temple walls, telling stories of pharaohs and important events, including myths and stories about the gods. Most Egyptian writings were records, legal documents and letters important for the day-to-day -day running of the country. This is the kind of writing most scribes did, but not everyone could write. This is Kamuzu. He has been taught to write in hieroglyphs so that he can write on the walls of tombs, record events and stories in papyrus and clay tablets, and paint them onto coffins as special incantations. You can see how hard he has to concentrate by the way his tongue sticks out. Stone tablets, or stela, were set up in the antechamber or public chapel area of a tomb. They were usually inscribed in hieroglyphics with an offering to ensure provision of food in the afterlife. The person buried in the tomb and his wife are shown on this stela and receive food from other figures. These family members are bringing offerings of food to their dead relatives. This stela dates back to around 1600 BC. Here is a simple set of hieroglyphs for you to do an activity with. Using these as a key, can you translate the words? Remember to read from top to bottom. Coffins and canopic jars also had hieroglyphic writing on them. These were often prayers and spells to ensure safe passage to the afterlife. Tarkush, our 3000 year old mummy, has many of these spells and incantations across her coffin. Her coffin is painted wood bright white and red and yellow banding with hieroglyphs on the side. The inside of her coffin lid reads, The Lady of the House, Tarkush, daughter of Husha, the doorkeeper of Osiris from Kush. This is now part of Sudan. Her mother Shay was Egyptian, so Tarkush was of mixed descent. The name Tarkush means the Kushite lady or the lady of the Kush. Here it is written in hieroglyphics. It seems the family were quite high status. Based on its style of decoration and that it was found in Thebes, this coffin is believed to date from the 25th dynasty of the ruling kings, the pharaohs. From around 1500 BC, coffins could be bought ready-made off the shelf, chosen by the person before they died. The new owner's name and titles were written onto gaps left on purpose in the painted inscriptions. The British Museum has a coffin which was painted by the same coffin maker who decorated Tarkush's. A Shabti is a small figure that was placed in the tomb of an ancient Egyptian. They were sometimes called U Shabtis. Shabtis were created to serve the dead in their next life, doing tasks such as irrigating the river and farming fields. They were made from blue faience, clay, wood and even glass and varied in size from 10 to 30 centimetres tall. The type of material and the size of the shabti that you had in your tomb depended on your status and wealth. Each one was designed to do a different job in the afterlife and had a prayer, spell or incantation marked onto them in hieroglyphs. High status ancient Egyptians were buried with 401 shabtis, 365, one for each day of the year, plus 36 overseers, one to oversee 10 shabtis each. Sometimes they carry the tools of their trade so we can tell what specific tasks they had. Perhaps a cook, 
a labourer in the fields, or a scribe. In our collections, one of our artefacts with hieroglyphs on is a page from the Book of the Dead. Actually, this wasn't a book. It was a collection of spells written on tomb walls or coffins, or on papyrus and put in a tomb. This fragment is a spell written on linen from chapter 99, which provides a boat for the journey of the dead person to the afterlife, a paradise known as the Field of Reeds, or Aru. But they could only go there if they could name all the parts of the boat. The texts were placed in the coffin or burial chamber. The Book of the Dead was flexible. People could choose the passages that they wanted to help them with their journey to the afterlife. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to come and visit us soon and keep an eye out for our virtual workshops.